Hello, hello everybody. Welcome to Motion Design Hotline. You called, we answered. I'm Evan Abrams here, joined as usual by our normal co-host, very normally, <laughs> yes. Kyle Hamrick. Scream to you, Kyle. What's going on? Uh, hi. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, I thought we were wearing costumes, so I'm a Dilophosaurus today. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, I'm, um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty obviously dressed up as Mr. Clean today, so mm, that's mm -hmm, uh, yeah. what I'll be doing. Well done. I, well done. some tiny wipes that I can clean the camera with. There we go. I brought pops. <laughs> Your office is immaculate. Yeah, I mean, you should. Yeah, except for this plant that's encroaching. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, today we are going to be uh, examining a little bit of competitive pumpkin carving today is mm -hmm. what we're going to be getting into. Uh, but we've got sort of a potpourri of little tips and tricks that are hidden within these project files. Some treats and or tricks Ooh, in order to... Some of both, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, we're, we're pretty much good to ghoul over here. And it's going to be... Um, I don't know. If people have any questions, get at us in the chat and we'll try to help you out. If there's anything that we don't touch on that you're interested in, in the in the things that we're looking at, um, just let us know. So just a shout out to the good people in the chat here. What do we got? Oh, we've got uh, over on YouTube, we've got Superloon31. Hello, hello. CJ holding it down in the chat. Umicorn, hello. Oliver Andrews, Penny Doodles, Wade, what's going on? And uh, all, all the good people. With All the here. usual suspects over there. You know, Evan, um, I think it's important to note that uh, this costume is actually, while it may seem like it's just me doing my normal dinosaur nonsense, which it <laughs> certainly is, to be clear. Right. Um, this is also actually an homage oh, because, okay. uh, as we all know, Jurassic Park... <laughs> from which this is an officially licensed costume and one oh. of the noteworthy dinosaurs, was the first film to feature the use of After Effects. Oh, well, let's just jump into your screen there. Yeah. We'll uh, observe. This little this little bit where uh, it has Nedry's little ah, 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 ah thing, that was made with a very early version of After Effects or what would become After Effects. Mm. And so this is technically the first appearance of it in a major film. So there you go. Trivia. Yep. <laughs> News you can use right here on the program. <laughs> I'm glad that they kept the uh, the sheep sound, which I assume is from when the, the dinosaur eats the goat out there. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Um, so yeah. It's actually I one mean, of the developer's moms, I believe. Oh, <laughs> Lord. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Further trivia. Well, these are some sick burns that only make it into the into the show. Kyle, um, <laughs> we've got your screen up. We might as well have a look at your pumpkin. Let's see yeah, what... Yeah, uh, we might as well. Jackie O'Lantern you brought to us here. Let me... Um, you know, I probably should have had the final render ready because I think that will be a little easier uh, than looking at this. Well, we'll see. <laughs> we'll race. <laughs> um, I'll make a preview and we'll see which one gets here first. <laughs> Whoop. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. Oh, uh, there's too much open. Oh, where is it? <laughs> I can't find it. <laughs> this is good TV, folks. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we've got a pumpkin. Yours is yep. a bit more three-dimensional than mine, for mm -hmm. sure. That's um, true. <laughs> I was going for more of an emoji style uh, on mine here. Um, do, 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 do. Let's see. Let's see. I'll try, try to see in the chat. I thought it was an homage to another AE show. Oh, there we oh. go. <laughs> No, no, we, we, don't, we don't mention our rival program here on the Motion Design Hotline. There we go. Okay. So uh, this was actually opening behind um, sort of our little broadcast app, which, of course, forces itself in front of everything, so you can't see it. Right. So, <laughs> all right. So here is mine. Um, and, yes, this is, uh, this is a 2.5D situation. So mm. it's all completely flat layers, but using... After Effects 3D capabilities to kind of give the appearance of some three dimensionality hmm. and kind of um, so this is using some photos and a couple video layers, uh, just the smoke there um, to, you know, go for sort of a stylized, realistic vibe on this one. Uh, right. But the whole thing is that this is all customizable. So um, let me, so I've got kind of the final version and then one we can just kind of freeform explore in. 
the whole point is that you can change or animate the face and this will all update um, dynamically. There's a better word for that that I'm spacing on right now. Just, yeah, procedurally, dynamically. Procedurally, there we go. That's the word. I got dino brain. <laughs> brain the size of a walnut, I guess. Um, <laughs> That'd I probably be generous, true. honestly. Um, so just to kind of demonstrate that real quick, I assume most folks know this, but if you come up here and click on your composition tab and you click on the name, you can open another viewer and it will lock your current one. Let's just go ahead and kind of blow that up. And then we could go in here to the face design and we could just change this to be whatever we want. See, currently it's this um, kind of animated version, but we could turn the face into, uh, you know, whatever we might like it to be here. Um, hmm. I'll just kind of do sort of a goofy little cutout here. And then or we'll make this one kind of um, a sad <laughs> pumpkin. Um, there you go. See? Huh. Right. So you could you could technically load in you could load in an image if you wanted to. Now is yours working on the Luma or the Alpha of the Alpha, yeah. Okay. <laughs> good. Good, good, good. We we do those independently. So you ended up going with, a, with an alpha solution. I went totally Luma with mine. Cool. So it'll be interesting. But we do have a similar idea. So I'm just gonna <laughs> I like, yeah, I like I'm just gonna guy. sit here and, and play with this. I, I toyed with the idea of trying to do like um, sort of a simplified Evan photo as right. my pumpkin, but um, I feel like a lot of the times those are sort of unsatisfying. Yeah. Um, and also, this didn't take as much time. So yeah. that... <laughs> <laughs> you're just tracing a photo on a pumpkin. That's not real yeah. carving. Um, okay. So we'll go, jump into mine. I opted for a bit more of an emoji looking. Uh, mm -hmm. piece here. So we we both kind of went for expressions on the pumpkin. Um, so same kind of deal, though, is what we're looking at here is a lot of instances of, in my case, the fire that's inside of the mm -hmm. of the Jacquo lantern here, which I'd, we'll talk about kind of rigging and, and making this kind of undulating fire. But also that a lot of it is really just down to um, this kind of dopey looking face here, but <laughs> it, it's made up of, of eyes and mouth parts and all of it is sort of black and white things that are put over top of each other. So it's, it's either black or it's white. And then we're using Luma mats in order to drive the rest of the stuff. So making liberal use cool. of the track mat system over here. And oh, we've got a question from Wade. Um, mm -hmm. Could this be driven by a PNG or TIFF sequence uh, with alpha? Yeah. So he's asking about mine. I'm assuming yeah. yours probably could also. Mine definitely could. It's literally just kind of a holding pen for whatever shapes you put into this little pre-comp. Yeah. Um, and I'll, I'll show you more of my setup when we get there in a minute. But uh, you could put anything in here still or animated and it would be reflected on the pumpkin so yeah and it's any time that you're going to so in my case right if we just go back to evan's screen here real quick so in my case right the different kind of functions that we need the face to do is cast a kind of inverted shadow out in front right and make some holes in the pumpkin and create the depth of the pumpkin. Um, and that's pretty much it. But we're able to accomplish that with just a few um, a few instances of where that is. And in fact, if you come up here into your project and we find pumpkin face, you can see that it's been used three times. So it actually counts the number of times that you've kind of deployed this out in the world. Now, one of the reasons that I went with Luma instead of Alpha is I was trying to get the goopiness of these <laughs> eyes. Mm -hmm. So if we come into the, the kind of eye layer here, um, so I'm using an adjustment layer in here to apply a, a blur and then a levels in order to crunchitize this stuff. So I'll just, I'll remove that and you can see that it's nice, hard, crispy edges, right? Mm -hmm. Like this is some good crispified stuff but if you're cutting this out of a pumpkin right you're gonna you're gonna end up with a little bit a bit of sloppiness around the edges or at least i do because i'm very bad at carving of pumpkins um and i wanted this kind of blorpiness when the pupil kind of moves away from the edge um i was really trying to simulate 
how in order to get kind of a floating pupil, you need connective tissue to the outside of the the mm -hmm. void, right? Um, also, people of the chat, let us know any kind of pro uh, uh, pro pumpkin carving ideas that you've got going on. We want to know what you're you're laying out this spooky season, or um, anti pumpkin carving techniques too. No, oh, that's <laughs> yeah, sure. If you're <laughs> you're just very opposed. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know. You, you know, I don't get into a lot of the holidays. We we don't we barely put anything out on the tiny lawn out here. But yeah, so oh, uh, also another question coming in, Kyle. We're getting real live questions live coming. <gasps> questions, yay! Well, we okay. did. We do tell people to ask those, so sometimes it happens. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, so could you use something animated with character animator or something made with a tracked face? Yeah, absolutely. So, yes. Right. <laughs> so basically, like. You know, when it comes to sort of the inputs, um, I did a fair amount of rigging on on mine. So I don't know, I don't know, Kyle, what you what you got in, in as far as controls, but a little bit of a preview on this. So I actually broke all of my sort of controls out. I've got like this controls layer here that is giving me um, a kind of blinking slider, so I can I can control some blinks, and I've got some brow angle, so I can. I can work that. And I got the mouth. I did some rigging of the mouth here. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I got the other one in case I wanted a wider uh, mouth there. But trying to get the, the controls harmonized somewhere. Um, and then the eye pupils themselves are actually hooked up to this uh, layer up here, which I am going to just kind of... When I can grab a when I can grab a hold of it and not the keyframes itself, <laughs> you know. But I can I can drag this around, and I just want to point out that you can see the pupils are moving, right? But we've also got a little bit of a tilt going on, a little bit of shifting of the actual whites of the eyes themselves as they kind of drift uh, to the sides like that, and then. There's a bunch of other kind of rigging concepts that are going on in here as well that there's a lot of like derived motion. So mm -hmm. the the outer husk here is rotating, but you can see that the shadow on the ground is, well, it's mm -hmm. responding, but not necessarily <clears throat> rotating and stuff like that. So anyway, these are the types of things that we're going to uh, we're going to delve into. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Yeah, um, no, that's interesting because you definitely rigged your face. I, I worried a little bit more about sort of the composite and procedural setup and i left my face fairly simple it's just literally one shape layer with a couple of animated shapes on it yeah well i was i don't know i was thinking i'll, I'll make a i'll make an interesting character and then i'll make it do stuff and then i just mm -hmm. had it go through um the various stages of grief i guess is what i ended up <laughs> doing so you know pumpkins have existential dread um so where <laughs> CJ, the chainsaw is the ideal pumpkin carving tool. Yeah, you know, whatever, you gotta use whatever you've got on hand. Yeah. It's, it's critical. Um, and so let's see, where to start, where to start. I think I might as well uh, dip into... How about I start let's... with the... Yeah, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to ask for... Uh, unless I missed it while I was working on my stupid pumpkin face, um, <laughs> just sort of a very quick, like, layer step through of... How okay. your composites built? Okay, let's do that. Let's let's start with composite v composite. Let's do that. Um, so, if we work through these, are just control layers up at the top. So there's nothing really to write home about that. But under those, I'll just uh, kind of kind of solo these. Yeah, uh, we've got we've got lil face. What I've called I've called lil face, and then pumpkin face. Um, very helpful uh, labels for me. But it's just one slightly smaller version of that black and white face and then one sort of normal size version. We're not going to see those, but they're going to be referenced by a bunch of other things. So we've got what we're calling here the outer husk. And this is just a regular, this is all the stuff that is the outside of this object. Mm -hmm. And it is looking at pumpkin face and it's using an inverted luminance of that. So if we switch that back and forth, that creates holes. So the white parts become holes in this. And then underneath of that, we've got something that I've called the, what we're calling the compound uh, flame in here. Now this thing is basically something that I wanted to be kind of on the inside of the pumpkin. So this is a little bit of blurred out 
uh, flame that's hanging out in there. And it is casting light on the very edge, <laughs> the very edge of kind of the holes in here, mm -hmm. right? So that's why it is looking at Lil Face, the shrunken down version of the Luma Mat, which would cast it on the inside here. And it is, again, an, an inverted Luma of that, right? So it's, it's ending up in that space. So is the, is the sort of meat on the inside of your carving, is that just a, another flat layer? Right. So that's where we get to yeah. inner husk. And yeah. the inner husk is, of course, looking at Lil Face to create this kind of edge. So this just has this kind of nice fill on it that is a slightly darker color. So if we solo this, you can see, oh yeah, there there is sort of inner husk. And if we put outer husk on there, that's creating this kind of three-dimensional uh, aspect, right? Just referencing a slightly scaled in. And in this case, it works only because it's not really going very far, right? Like the, the two pieces aren't migrating too far away from each mm -hmm. other. There is actually um, some very slight change on the X position of this as it rotates. So you'll see I've linked this to the rotation so that the two are actually sliding they're they're sliding just slightly as it rotates to create just a little bit of parallax uh, in that. So just a little, little bit of linkage uh, to make that happen. Anyway, that's our inner and outer husks. Uh, then we get into another uh, flame element here. This is just the fire that's inside uh, of the pumpkin. Uh, just like there's a fire inside of all of us, that essential right. uh, uh, warmth and spark that... Uh, I want to say Prometheus stole. So anyway, that's what, that's why we put a candle inside the pumpkin to bring it to life. Um, so that is kind of the hard flame that you see in there. Then there are a few other kind of glowing elements, which is really just a duplicate of that flame that has been blurred and then stretched and, and dropped down kind of on the ground here, you can see. So that is, doesn't show up particularly well, you know, when it's in a low contrast situation, mm -hmm. but that's just kind of down there and then we've got another one that is kind of the glow that shows up on the inside of the pumpkin again lots of blurriness to bring that up uh what i've called the backstop which is just a duplicate of the outer husk that's hanging out in the back so that mm -hmm. that light kind of casts on that then we get into the shadow relief is what i'm calling this thing <laughs> which is um i've used power pin on this to deform out and kind of stretch the shadow away. But what this thing is, is another copy of the pumpkin face. Mm -hmm. So it's hanging out down here, and then it is being used as the, uh, <clears throat> as the, <clears throat> oh, 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 Kyle being attacked by the spirit of Halloween. <laughs> um, another one of those candle uh, duplicates down that is really just using that shadow relief as a track mat so that it's only showing up in the bright spots. And then finally, a little, just a little simple gradient background uh, mm -hmm. back here. And that's pretty much it. Like, you know, I say pretty much it. What is that? 14 layers. But again, just remember, these are a lot of duplicates of the fire, right. the holes, and then things that are referencing those. So that's pretty much it from, from what we're looking at, kind of an overview uh, mm -hmm. of those things. But Kyle, how does that stack up to, uh, to your pumpkin over here? Well, I mean, obviously my build is a little different, but yeah. I think we went for a very similar strategy here. Mm. Um, also, this seems like a good time to remind folks that uh, while today's is not up yet, um, it will be, at, uh, the, these project files will be up soon after the show ends. Um, and you can, of course, find all of our project files in previous episodes at motiondesignhotline.com, which is, as Evan always likes to remind us, a real website for real people. That's right. <laughs> Come and stick your hand into our candy bowl and take all of all the project <laughs> files. Yum, 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 yum. Uh, unwrap them at your leisure. Trade them with your friends, uh, I guess. <laughs> and also, if you want to ask us questions that we uh, will then be forced to answer on a, pre on a uh, future episode... Um, then that's a good place for that too. You can do that in the chat, but you can also submit, you know, more uh, robust questions there on the website. And we may do an entire episode based around whatever your query might be. <laughs> that's true. That's, that's how we do it. That's how the show goes. You send us questions, you send us cues, we turn them into A's and then, uh, and that's, <laughs> and then it keeps going. So yeah, Kyle, we got your thing up on the screen. Um, you. I like this this terrifying forest and wood texture. You've got a lot more 
<laughs> you have a lot more like uh, textural elements going on in this thing. Yeah. Well, you know, we decided that mine was going to be the more realistic. So I tried to see what I could do with, you know, real elements. Mm. So um, I have several things from Adobe Stock. Uh, they're all from the free collection. So you'll be able to, you know, use these as well if you want. So I have some spooky woods here. Um, let's go ahead and maybe kind of uh, simplify this back. So we have the, the spooky woods. Oh, well, uh, uh, there we go. Uh, we have a table and we have a plain pumpkin. No, no, a spooky table. <laughs> yeah, it's a spooky table um, and then a spooky pumpkin. Um, and then two clips that are just uh, some smoke because um, I felt we needed a little bit of ambiance um, to help, like, spookify everything. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing scarier than a fog machine, I gotta say. Yeah. It's so terrifying. Agreed. <laughs> it's so moist. <laughs> so, um, uh, take just a second to load. I'm going to knock down my resolution a bit here uh, for the purposes of the stream. Um, you'll see, well, if I turn off my dynamic resolution... Um, turn off. There we go. So you can see the face is in fact animating in here. Um, so you're kind of getting that just quickly animated. Uh, I turned back on my original shape layer setup here. So this is all it is. It's just one shape layer with a handful of shapes, and there's a couple different faces that it goes through. Hmm. Um, not a ton of keyframes and all kind of at the same place. I certainly could have made this more complicated if I wanted to, but I didn't. Um, <laughs> and then I thought that it could use just a little bit of kind of organic vibes. So there's an adjustment layer here. This could certainly could have been put directly on this layer, but I thought I might want to do other faces on the show. Um, so there's a little bit of rough and edges and then just a touch of blur to kind of soften and give everything like a little bit of um, chunkiness, because, you know, people aren't going to cut in perfectly smooth vector lines. So um, there is one in-between composition right here, which takes that face design and uses it as an inverted alpha mat for the pumpkin image right mm -hmm. there. So that's all it is. And then what I did is I put... Um, the transparency or the uh, opacity slider from each layer up here into the essential graphics panel so that when I use this, <clears throat> when I use this in my actual composite, I could, uh, you know, use several copies of this, but I'd also be able to say, turn off the pumpkin and only see the face if that's what I want mm, um, okay. or vice versa. So I, I could use, you know, the, uh, oop. Can actually do it here you know i could see just the plain pumpkin if i wanted that or i could see just the face um there's a way to <laughs> kind of use that when i'm doing the the opposite here um so let's just take a look at kind of what the layer stack looks like and you can kind of see how i built this so um there's a couple layers of creepy forest here not really too complicated it's just two copies of the forest like kind of slightly offset hmm. um and uh, this this is a version of the comp where I turned off the um, keyframes here just so that we could play with it. So like I, I kind of set it up so that you could sort of do a little bit of like spooky parallax when the when the camera move happens, right? Right. Um, and I mean that's really all these are. So uh, these are three these are two D layers in three D space so that we do have the ability to move the camera. I'll show that in a minute. Um, and then there's just some exposure and some levels here to kind of colorize and darken everything. Hmm. A little bit of our BG smoke, which um, I'll show this real quick. So both of our smoke layers are actually looped. Ooh. Um, here we by, go. Yeah, the way that you do something like this is see this little marker right here and notice how you have this little marker right here because that's the same time on this clip. That's how you kind of get a video clip to loop on itself. Okay. So this this is what you're actually seeing is kind of uh, I'll, I'll do this uh, red one here. So this is this is kind of the original cut of the clip, and then you can slice it up and take that earlier version and make it so that you know what's uh, what's about to be 
that frame at the beginning is the frame at the end, and then you just fade it into itself. Okay, so kind of like a, yeah, you're cross dissolving the middle, I guess. Over, exactly. Over top. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So, I, so when yeah, you get here, it's the exact same frame as as you know what one past the end would be, and so right. you're just kind of doing a, a super easy fade here, and since it's smoke, it sells pretty well, you know. Yeah, I'm always doing, so I'll do that and then I'll stitch like a copy of it over the middle. So it'll be like, it'll be like mm -hmm. end, end, and then <clears throat> I guess because I'm, I'm, I guess I'm, then I'm looping it twice. That's why I, I was. Yeah, I mean, this. it, it kind of depends on what the thing is. Like, uh, you know, here, uh, just a nice slow fade worked fine mm -hmm. and it didn't like, I, I think if you're looking at this isolated, it does get a little muddy in here, but because it's like such a subtle background element in the main comp, this was fine. Yeah. Um, so both of the smoke loops are doing that same thing. There's one up in front as well, but um, you know, that's whatever. So yeah. uh, there's our, there's our background. And then we have our, our old tabletop. There we go. And we just, I tinted it orange. And then I used some exposure to knock down everything except this little mask right here, because this is, of course, as you see from this little icon right here, that tells you that um, that effect is using the compositing options and referencing one of the layer masks hmm. to determine where it's visible or not visible in this case. I was going to... I was going to say, we, pr we promise tricks. I feel like that looping thing is a really nice trick. I hope people yeah. make use of that in their daily lives. They should. Um, yeah, uh, looping stuff can be tricky, especially when you have video layers. So being able to kind of know ways to make that work is nice. Um, obviously, I did kind of what I think is the easiest version of it here because smoke is organic enough that if you fade pretty slowly, you're probably okay. Um, <laughs> no you one's may, gonna notice. Yeah, you may need to get into other relationships where you like use a layer as its own track mat, but like time offset that. So you can kind of fade it back off with itself. So it looks more organic or something, but um, didn't need that here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so one thing I will point out is that my uh, pumpkin glow is not remotely dynamic. Oh. So, um, you know, I could have probably set something up that's referencing the face I kind of tried that and honestly it wasn't doing enough. So I was like, eh, I'll just kind of make a little blobby thing and it looks fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> it has to look right. It doesn't have to be right. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's a question of how, you know, flexible versus uh, ease. And since there is a 3D camera move happening in the, um, knock this down, but happening in the actual like export version, um, here we go. We'll open this up. So we start off back here and then we zoom in and there's a little bit of, um, you know, actual camera rotation here. Mm. So um, getting the, the face responsive glow to kind of sit at the right spot, like, and look good. It just wasn't really working out. So I just kind of went with the dumb version here and I think it works fine as long as you have some kind of face on the pumpkin. <laughs> Um, so anyway, now that we have this big background set up, um, it's all just about the pumpkin. Right. Um, so let's kind of step back into that. Uh, let's see. So we have, here's kind of the main, uh, layer of the pumpkin here, which is just that comp that you saw earlier, just knocked way down in exposure because obviously this is going to be kind of dark except the places that it's glowing from. And right. so that you know, is handled with another version. So here's one that is not knocked down in exposure at all, but it's masked off very softly so that you can see you're kind of only getting kind of that central glow there. Mm -hmm. And then we have another version uh, that is using kind of one of these, um, uh, one of these instances of the face. I think this one is just the face. Yep. Uh, so, uh, as a mat, and that has a couple layers on it. You'll see, um, here we go. I'll just, honestly, this in itself is kind of uh, fun. It's just got a little bit of radial fast blur to okay. kind of give it that, um, give it that like push out glow. Mm -hmm. And so that becomes the mat for this, this glowy version here. 
There's our pumpkin. We have a little bit of extra glow on top of that. And then the inside was the part that I thought was pretty fun. Um, so you'll see, you know, we have kind of this carved, chunky, like we need some depth here, right? Right. So I created um, these inner edges here using this recipe. Uh, some more radial blur. In this case, it's a CC radial blur. And then we um, crunched that with levels on alpha channel, which is a, a good trick for any time you want to crunch up some blur. <laughs> uh, filled it just so I could control the color. Roughen edges because, again, you kind of want your pumpkin carving to be a little chunky, especially on the inside edge there. Okay. And then a bit of noise to help give it some texture here. Let me turn that back up to full. Because, um, you know, you don't want your pumpkin to be completely smooth. And then I have another version of pretty much the same thing, but it has some fractal noise on it just to give some extra texture. And then another version of that that is the same thing, but much darker because okay. you kind of want the glow to be coming from the inside. And you'll see here, I left that nice and soft. Mm. So once you get that all composited, you kind of get kind of the dark edges closest to us and the light edges closest to the interior light. Right. You're so, getting that kind of glowing yeah. flesh that you yeah, get exactly. on the pumpkin. Okay. And mm -hmm. I just wanted to say, I hope Broadcast Bytes, that's, that's a good look at the uh, effects panel they're asking to observe that but i think that's because there's a delay on the feed and <laughs> i was like oh kyle's kyle's looking at the effects panel is it deep but yes hopefully that's <laughs> hopefully that's getting you in there and if you want to really dissect the effects and, and stuff and really get into the nitty-gritty please download the project files mm -hmm. hotline.com a real website for real people um <laughs> but yeah i like that i like that kind of i was struggling with like oh, how am i going to get the kind of the the what would what we would say in 3d like the subsurface scattering type of yeah deal, right? yeah I, that does a really yeah. good job this one took, you know, took a little bit of figuring to kind of land on it. But then once once I kind of had, you know, this version, I was like, okay. So since I built it with a blur, I can definitely, like, make a dark version and have it kind of fade off into that. Right. Um, and it works pretty well. You know, every once in a while, there's sort of a, a weird bit. And it gets, like, a little goopier around, like, here than I might want it to be. But I, I'm happy enough with it that Perfect. it's, you know, it's good for this. Um, so after all that, the only thing we really needed to do is the inside of the pumpkin. Um, you know, we're seeing inside the interior kind of scraped. And so this is just our old friend Fractal Noise again um, with a little bit of tritone. <laughs> and then um, I did uh, I did make kind of a glow amount that wiggles a little bit. It's pretty subtle. I probably could have hyped it up a little bit, but um, there's a few of the kind of glow effects and exposures that are tied to that. So they do flicker just a little bit over mm -hmm. the life of the piece. So um, that's what's going on there. And then you end up with kind of your full composited pumpkin. Um, there is a little bit, uh, since we had that, um, here, let me just kind of turn a couple other things off. I'll get the background back. So once that was kind of built and I was pretty happy with, you know, my pumpkin and my background, then I started futzing around with doing this little camera move. Mm -hmm. And I was pretty happy with the way it held up, but especially when you get a little close and if you go off axis a bit, it starts feeling pretty flat. Right. So just to cheat that a little bit, I have an adjustment layer here with, uh, it's pretty subtle, but using the bulge effect to kind of help sell the roundness a bit here oh, okay. in the middle of the frame. And you'll see it's only at point two. The uh, the default is one, which would have been like quite a bit. <laughs> um, but, you know, honestly, if, if you wanted to kind of get really close and sort of have it feel a little overwhelming, that might have been really fun. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I was pretty happy with how that worked out. And yeah. well, uh, that's I was going to really say, that, that really has like a fish-eyeing effect yeah. on the thing that... I don't know. Maybe not enough people are are getting into the warps and the bulges and mm -hmm. those types of things to like. Oh, it's got to be it's got to be totally real. Actually, no. Just just be marginally believable. <laughs> uh huh. And uh, to that point, um, I do also have one other adjustment layer that has some vignetting on it. Oh. Um, but then I also I'll leave the vignette off for a second. I also uh, am a big fan of using optics compensation, but mm. reversing it so that you can kind of get some of that warping at the edges of the frame like this. 
Um, and especially on something like this, it kind of felt like it helped add that surreal quality. So uh, there you go. Yeah. That's that's pretty much my breakdown. Certainly happy to like dive in deeper to any specific parts if we want. But that's true. Um, if anyone, anyone wants us to zoom in on something specific, we can we can definitely do that. Um, I want to take people through some of the kind of control setup that I had going on on mine. Yeah, I'd love to see that more. I, your... I, I kind of wish that my face was more controllable now that <laughs> I've seen what you did. <laughs> well, because yeah, let's let's just jump into your face real quick because it's a lot of keyframes on. Like sure. paths, right? It's just a lot of path. That's stuff. all it is. Yep. It's literally a bunch of paths and just some keyframes on those. I started with the happy face and then I was like, what what can I do with that? Um, you know, just kind of like tweaked the uh, tweaked what was there. <laughs> Perfect. So I yeah, I was hoping to make a, a bit more of a character thing. Um, so all of my controls basically here, uh, just to run you through those again, I've got a little bit of blinking that's possible. So I've got kind of eyelids that can shutter. I've got a brow angle that I can tweak. I've got a mouth that I can, I can make kind of larger and smaller and, and wider and narrower. So I've got, I've got those tweaks going on. Um, the other thing that, uh, that I've got at my disposal here is, a little bit of a, a joystick kind of thing. So mm -hmm. it is a, I've got a shape layer that is parented to a null. Now that means that the position, remember when you pair things together, they become uh, relative to each other, right? And that means that the position, if it was zero, zero, it would be right. It's like the joysticks at neutral. Mm -hmm. And so if I move this away, just remember that it's, movements are all relative and i've got this rigged up and you can see that it's moving a few objects so it's moving the pupils and the actual whites of the eyes themselves yeah. so let's track this back so if we go into pumpkin face pumpkin face just has eyes eyes mouth and a black solid in here so if we get into some of these eyes they're both duplicates of the same eye but one thing that I have used is a little essential properties on them. And I'm just using that to flip the brow or that eyelid over so that I can, I can have basically not mirrored, right? If I were to mirror or to flip the eyes, then controlling that pupil would have them diverge to the outside and the <laughs> inside, right? Which is not what we want. We only want to get the brows going. And if I wanted independent brow control, that's a totally other thing. But let's tuck into the eye itself so you can kind of see the construction in here. So we've got uh, a shape layer, you know, just a big, a big black rectangle up here. Um, then we've got the pupil, which is a, a black circle. I, I was playing around with having this kind of connecting piece here, but that really didn't work out. So I got rid of that. And then just a white circle here. So that's really all it is, is you know, a white circle, a black circle, a big, a big black rectangle. Um, and so if we get into some of the expressions that power this stuff, let's just look at the pupil real quick. All we're doing is it is looking at the composition called Jackie and the layer uh, in there that's called shape layer one, and then it's transform dot position. So if we just go back to Jackie real quick, that's just pointing to the address here. It's just taking us to this and we're just using that one for one. There's no conversion or anything. It's a one-to-one -one translation of this position literally becomes that the position of this pupil. Cause if you scrub through here, you can see all the changes that are actually happening, mm -hmm. right? Cause they're, they're translating in here. Now we've got this adjustment layer with a, a Gaussian blur and a levels. This is working to create that kind of goopiness, uh, getting the, the things stuck together. The reason I went with, with black and white stuff is so that I can just affect things on the RGB. I don't have to touch any alphas mm -hmm. going on in here. Um, and then the other thing that is, uh, so, so that's got our pupil going the right place. The brow, this kind of uh, brow going up and down, this is looking at the blink, so the slider control back in the comp called Jackie. And I'm using something called a linear. So the linear is an mm, expression. Yes. This is going to allow you to 
map one value to another. So the blink values of 0 to 100 are being remapped to negative 150 to 150. This is all applied on the Y position. You can right click and separate your positional dimensions, which is gonna make this a lot easier to kind of mess around with. Um, but I'm, I'm remapping the value 0 to 100 to negative 150, 150. This happens to be parented to the null that's in the sensor. So remember the kind of relativism of this stuff. But that means that if I, if I rack this from 0 to 100, we're going to get some blinking happening or some, some change in how far this is from the center. That's pretty much it. Right? That's, it's, it seems complex, but there's not, not a lot to it. Um, the other thing is we're looking at the comp called Jackie and the layer called Controls and the angle control in there that is changing just the rotation angle, right? This is another one-for-one -one control that is going through. Now, this is the transform effect on here that is causing the flipping to happen. Now, the transform is, of course, pushed into the window essential graphics here that allows us to make that flip happen, right? So that's a, a lovely way to, to do that. Now, of course, the transform is happening after, right? So all of this stuff is going on and then the transform is happening. So the order of operations is pretty critical, but that's pretty much it for uh, eye control, right? So if we come back to Jackie, that's pretty much it for all of our, our eye stuff, right? Our blinking, our brow angle, our, our shape layer here, that's it. We, we got it going and, and looking the way we want, but by moving the controls out here to where the actual action happens, Right? It's, it's so much easier to uh, make stuff go. Um, oh, right. That was the other thing I wanted to show about the eyes. Hold on. I feel like I've eaten, a, I've eaten so much candy today, Kyle. I'm, <laughs> I'm turned into Micro Machines guy. Okay. So the whites of the eyes, if we come into its... So again, this is rigged, but it's pointing at the pupil. So it's looking at the pupil here. And it's just taking its transform position and dividing by five. So this will move a fifth as much mm -hmm. as the pupil will move, which will create that kind of parallaxing relationship, yeah. right? This is moving a lot. This moves a little. And, you know, it's a little bit lazy because I'm a, I'm a little bit of a lazy person. Uh, but the... Efficient, I think, is the word you're... Oh, after. yeah, that's true. Yeah, sorry. We're, we're, <laughs> we are so sleek and efficient. I'm not... Look, I'm not broke. I'm a minimalist. Um, so <laughs> I've got the pupil and the white. They're both parented to the null, and that makes them relative to that middle center. So this one moves 10. This one moves 2, right? A fifth of that movement. So a nice... Nice widow bit of parallaxing uh, that goes on there. Um, let's see. Let's see. What else is, yeah. is good to show rig? Uh, the mouth. Let's talk about the mouth while we're in here. <laughs> we got to talk about that mouth. Um, or meowth, if you will. I was kind of <laughs> <I will>. going, <laughs> I was kinda going for kind of a, I don't know, that, that kind of Cal Arts bean mouth going on here. Um, now, let's get into kind of the construction of that. There's a lot of uh, warping going on. So I've used a arc upper warp to hmm. kind of give this 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 kind of smile, right? Is what I, I wanted to get, a, get that stretching to make it feel a bit more spherical a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but there's another adjustment down here. I was going to use like a turbulent displace on it, but I opted to, to not do that. Um, but... There is a little bit of that gooping going on, right? That to to soften yeah, yeah. what would otherwise be a kind of jagged uh, mouth. However, the teeth the teeth are not part of that because the jaw is obviously these are rigid structures. This pumpkin has teeth; it has fangs of some kind. So I wanted it, those to move independently. Yeah. So if we just come into the actual shape of the mouth, all that's happening. When we are, um, when we're changing the sliders out there in Jackie, it's saying we're just uh, referencing the X and Y slider. And that's it. That's all that's all that's happening. Those are being piped directly into the X and Y of this scale. So, all that's doing is is changing the scale of this layer. The bottom row of teeth. Those are these yellow ones. I'm going to call up their positions. Again, I've separated the X and Y because 
I'm not going to have any. Easier. Yeah. yeah. And we're not going to have any horizontal change to mm -hmm. the teeth, right? But the vertical change is, again, we're using another linear and we're calling up part of the scale, just the second, the second, the Y component of the mm -hmm. scale. And you can do that by just pick whipping. So if we've got the uh, scale of this thing open down here, you want to, when you pick whip, you've got your thing selected where it's going to go. Don't point to the scale. You can point to a specific mm -hmm. part of the scale, right? And that's going to give you just... You see, oh, it's turned yellow here. That's awesome. So I didn't know it did that. So <laughs> that is turned yellow. So what we know is that our scale is going to go from 0 to 100, and the result should be something like 20 to 150. And we're kind of dialing in how big and small yeah. the teeth get from each other. Um, and yeah, just remember, if you eat a lot of candy, eventually your teeth will be very small because they'll rot out of your head. <laughs> um you know. you know, Evan, before you get too far away from it, let's okay. just take a quick second, since you've referenced linear again. Sure. I mean, I don't think we should go too deep into it, but it looks pretty scary. But if you if you kind of step back a second, it's actually pretty straightforward what's happening. So on the line above there, he's got the input, whatever the thing is that's kind of driving this expression, okay? Mm -hmm. And then you create the range of that thing, and then the range of this thing that it's on. So uh, in this case, he is using zero to 100 as the, you know, the scale input, the driver. Um, and then, as he said, you, you can kind of dial that in. Maybe he started with like 10 and, you know, 180 and he felt like that was too big. You kind of just mm -hmm. adjust these numbers until it feels right. But you're kind of saying, take this thing and how much of that thing. And then that applies to how much of this thing. Uh, it's the magic sauce that connects unlike properties. Yeah, and it, we're we're often having to do these conversions because we could, right? I could have just multiplied by a certain number, right? And yeah. been like, yeah, we'll just multiply that by like 0. 0.1, blah, blah, blah. But really, I want the scale to start at 20 and end at 150. Mm -hmm. So it's, you can think about this like, this number becomes this number. Exactly. And yep. this number becomes this number. It's a little bit like how vampires become bats or uh, uh, teen wolves become wolves. Um, those types of trans... This is a time of transformation. The leaves are changing um, and the, the monsters are also changing, I guess. Uh, <laughs> Halloween is an allegory for puberty. So... Um, <laughs> <laughs> what... <laughs> What else have we got going on in here? I, I gotta be conscious of our time. I know we've only got like a, a few more minutes in here. I wanted to talk about um, okay, so I think that's pretty much all of the mouth stuff, right? That's that's got all, all the mouth stuff going on. Um, I, I have a thought or two that might okay. be valuable f for folks, and, and maybe it's not super deep to dive into, but um, I can tell you my answer to this question. When you started, mm -hmm. did you? did you kind of have a plan in place for the compositing or did you kind of make a rough face and see if you could start layering things up to get more or less the look you were after and then just <laughs> fine tune from there? Cause yes. that's definitely how I worked. Yeah. My, my thing was this, right? I wanted to mm -hmm. get the, the black and white face first. That was like, that was, that was job number one, but mostly because I was kind of confident that once I've got this kind of binary, on off mm -hmm. of a thing, I, I'm going to use that to punch holes or to keep things right. Yeah. And then, I mean, the unfortunate thing is that I didn't, I didn't particularly plan what the pumpkin was going to look like. <laughs> so that's why, that's why you can kind of tell uh, Evan did not put a lot of design labor into the <laughs> actual uh, outside of the pumpkin here. And <laughs> hey, now it's intentionally. Uh, cartoony simplified. Yeah, a, a little, a little bit like that. I feel like if I had of taken more time with with what the outside would be, it wouldn't have kind of a weird chin going on with I, it. You know, I'm okay with the chin. Actually, I kind of liked it. Uh, yeah, it, to me, that kind of helps sell. You know how pumpkins have um, uh, segments to them um, with the vertical lines, and you know, so. To me, the chin kind of helped sell as like one of those little segments. Yeah, and I like so we've got this um, this pumpkin lid, right? This little mm -hmm. cut that I did around the top. Now this is using a path and then a tapered stroke up here. I was mm -hmm. trying to play with 
with putting more striations on it. Mm-hmm. And it ended up the, a striation going through like the eye, like, whoa, that's, that's looking way more badass. <laughs> like that is a, <laughs> you know, that is a, that is a much more hardcore pumpkin than I am sort of willing to, uh, <laughs> willing to put on there. Um, but yeah, the pumpkin is really just concentric circles, right? Like this is an ellipse, that's an ellipse. And then this middle part is another ellipse and that makes yeah. the pumpkin. But yeah, I, I don't know. It, I didn't have a, I did not have a huge plan. I did, however, Kyle, there was one thing that I did plan out and it was the fire that's in the middle of the pumpkin. Yeah, which so, you haven't really talked about. Let's, let's dive into that. We, it right. uh, looks like we have about 10 minutes left. Okay. So. Or five, really. Let me, I guess, start with kind of, um, I'm going to just duplicate in here, this thing called single flame. And I'm going to just kind of, kind of purge out, uh, everything in here. Um, just to get you, show you an, uh, where this came from. So I started off with this shape, right? Your classic uh, natural gas logo, mm-hmm. right? Yep. <laughs> and I put the, I just drag the anchor point down to the bottom and I'm thinking like, what do I want this to do? Well, I want it to go like this. Mm-hmm. I want it to scale like that. But I also need it to scale out like that. But what I really need it to do is undulate in a circle. The unfortunate thing is that it's actually kind of difficult to do that given the way the scale property actually behaves. So in order to do that, you have to set a bunch of keyframes on the scale, but you can't separate the scale dimension. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't, well, yeah, I, I couldn't get the undulation going the way I wanted until... I came in here and I created two sliders, a slider on X, a slider on Y. If these were right on top of each other, so I'll just show you the kind of the the values that are happening in here. So literally we're just going from 80 to 120 to 80 on the X, and then we're going 120, 80, 120 on the Y. If these are on top of each other, which as you can see, it doesn't look terrible, right? Like this is kind of like a oompa loompa doopity do mm-hmm. type of flame. Um, if anyone enjoys Howl's Moving Castle, right? Maybe you're familiar with uh, that type of of living flame. But if I want it to be kind of a circular motion, I actually just need to offset these away from each other, and that is producing this kind of rolling feeling to it. And mm-hmm. and the, and if we look at just look at the top corner of this. You can see that it's moving in a circle, right? Yeah. And that is from the eased... An ellipse, at least. Yeah, like this is the wave, the kind of compounding waveforms that cause that to happen, which you can really only do if you separate the X and Y sliders. The other thing that's... Really... I probably would have uh, gone a more complicated route, but I really like, uh, <laughs> especially for that cartoony look, I think that works really well. Yeah, and we can we can also like tweak these handles even more, right? Because now it creates this kind of like do 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 kind of a box feeling. But we've got one flame, so that's why we end up here with this thing that I've called compound flame, mm-hmm. which is two versions of that that are simply offset from each other just yep. a little bit, so that one's going, then the other one's going. Now I had thought about maybe I'll put a wave warp on top of that. But this actually feels a little bit too wacky. I spent all that time getting a meticulous Mm -hmm. control over it. Why am I getting wacky with it? And then the coloring is just a couple of gradient ramps. So these are just radial ramps that that, um, emanate kind of down at the bottom where the fire is at and where it's coming from, where the heat is the hottest. And then it changes as it gets up to the umbra, penumbra. Those are words for shadows. One of those. Yeah, Yeah, I don't know. Um, But (laughs) but basically like... Yeah, as it's getting longer, we're, we're getting exposed to totally different colors. Mm-hmm. So anyway, this is a great way to create kind of cartoony fire that, that has this dancing undulation. And if you, you know, speed it up, slow it down, you get different character to it. If you have it kind of rotating as well, that could cause some, some interesting stuff. Or, you know, like, like I said, you know, you can just drop like a wave warp on top of this thing and now you've got some... Jiggling, undulating fire. However, Kyle, I think we've come into the end of the time here. I just yeah. want to. <laughs> if I if I can do a quick summary, I think uh, that flame is a great encapsulation of it. But I think both of our projects are mm. are too. Where like 
this is something After Effects does really well, where you can kind of build a simple thing and then like use multiple copies of it, layer it on top of itself, affect each of them similarly, differently, and end up at something really cool while yeah. you still maybe have, you know, one place where you can kind of control everything easily. <laughs> but yeah, we, I don't know, we, we make our own Lego set, then we build something out of Legos, man. It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, yeah, I, I, see, I see we got like a couple of minutes. So folks, okay. uh, stay safe out there. Thank you for, uh, for joining me, uh, Diplodonis Kyle. Um, it's always... <laughs> Always terrifying when you show up in costume, so that's always great. Uh, but if people want to get at us, they can find us on the internet. I'm at E.C. Abrams uh, out on all the social medias. Kyle, you're at Kylosaurus Rex, as you can see down below. Um, um, not not Dilophosaurus Rex, which is not a thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. That would be King But Kylosaurus Rex is real, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah as, as real as you or I. Um, we'll be back at you next week, so come see us then. But uh, until next time. Stay creative, be kind to each other, and we will see you all around the internet. And at motiondesignhotline.com with project files and old shows and all the good stuff. Hey. <laughs> Scream! Goodbye. <laughs>